Hey there, Steve Shermer here at Silk Road Catalyst. Today I learned something very interesting about the president of Malawi, and I want to share it with you. In fact, I want to share that plus four other things that I learned about Christians in Malawi that I think you are going to find interesting. So let's get started. Like I said, I'm going to share five things with you about Christians in Malawi that you didn't know. And to do that, I have brought on my friend Ruben Kachala all the way from Malawi to help us learn these five interesting facts. So welcome Ruben to this episode and why don't you introduce yourself first and then we'll get straight into what you're gonna share with us. Hi, my name is Ruben Kachala and I am from Malawi, Africa. I'm a missions mobilizer working with the Frontier Missions International. I think most people, when they hear about Malawi, they have no idea what we are talking about. Some people confuse Malawi with the country of Mali, and others confuse it with Malaysia. I remember in India when someone had told me that Malawi is a district in southern Africa. I said, oh, wow. But Malawi is really an autonomous republic in the southern eastern part of Africa. All right, thank you, Ruben, for introducing yourself. Now let's get into these five interesting facts, starting with number one. The first thing I want to share about Malawian Christianity is that most people do not know that Malawi was first evangelized 160 years ago through the influence of the missionary David Livingstone. When David Livingstone stepped his foot on the African continent, especially in Malawi, he saw the need and went back to England and mobilized the students of the universities in England to come to Africa, especially Malawi, to evangelize. So these students gathered themselves in a mission agency called Universities Mission to Central Africa. And they arrived in Malawi in 1860 to preach the gospel for the very first time. Now in Malawi, Christianity has flourished. In fact, we are now 75% of the population of the whole country. And there are 3 million evangelical believers. The second thing that I want to share about Malawian Christianity is that most people do not know that the current president of Malawi is actually a pastor. Yes, a pastor, a theologian, and a missiologist. He has led his denomination nationwide for 24 years. In fact, he was also elected as a leader for the National Association of Evangelicals for over 15 years. And uh, he was trained in the U.S. at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School, where he earned a doctorate in missiology. That gives Malawi a very good opportunity for the gospel to flourish not only in Malawi, but all over the world from Malawi. The third thing I want to mention about Malawian Christianity is that despite the high percentage of Christianity and the flourishing of Christianity in the whole country, we still have three people groups in Malawi that have little or no access to the gospel. These three people groups are the indigenous Yao Muslim people group, uh, the Indian diaspora people groups in Malawi, and these are from the Hindu background as well as the Islamic background. And at the same time, we also have a large influx of the Chinese right now living in Malawi. They need the gospel despite Malawi enjoying revival of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The fourth thing that I want to comment about Malawi and Malawian Christianity is that while we rejoice for having the gospel for 160 years, the gospel that came with Western missionaries, we feel shortchanged in the area of mobilization. We feel that when the missionaries from the West came to Malawi and share the gospel, they could have mobilized us right at the beginning. Because we believe when God says God to all the world, he didn't just talk to Westerners. 
he said to the whole church in the whole world. And somehow the Western missionaries did not emphasize the idea that we too can go and become missionaries to the nations of the world. The feeling is that they were missionaries and we were only equipped to become local evangelists to our own people. It's only now that we are able to know that the call of God is not just for the West to the rest, but it's from the rich to the unreached. And therefore, we believe that we, after being reached by the Westerners, we were meant to be equipped and mobilized to go and become missionaries to the nations. Last thing I want to speak on the Christianity of Malawi is that right now, because of the influence of the mobilizers from outside this country, as well as those from within, Malawi is now turning from the mission field into the mission force. Actually, the current president, who is now leading Malawi, was one of the first influencers of this idea that the gospel cannot just stay in Malawi. God has called Malawi to be a contributor of the gospel to the nations of the world. Right now, Malawi has its very first mission sending organization that is funded led by Malawians. Its vision is to mobilize, equip, and send missionaries to the UPGs in Malawi, as well as those in Africa and other parts of the world. It has just recruited its four missionaries, and they're right now going through the training. We are thanking God, and we believe this will continue to cover the whole country, the whole continent, until Jesus is glorified among the nations through the efforts of Africa and Malawi. I don't know about you, but I found all of that very fascinating, especially the part about the president of Malawi. I mean, that's so cool. Actually, what was not in there, what I learned today from Ruben is that the president of Malawi years ago was very influential in Ruben's life to gain a global vision. And that's why Ruben today has founded and leading Frontier Missions International in Malawi. So if you would like to get a hold of him or connect with him, I am putting his contact information in the show notes so you know how to contact him. And if you have any questions about any of this, please reach out to us. Put your comments below. Tell us what you think. Give suggestions about future content, and we would love to hear from you. See you next time.